Good day, everyone. This is Anthony Nunez with FIU's Smart Tech team, bringing you another AWR tutorial. Specifically, this is not for you guys. It's for my wonderful lab mates, Tarek and Marisol. So Tarek and Marisol, please enjoy the video. Everybody else, there's still stuff to learn here. Um, however, there may be a joke here or there that you may not get uh, because obviously you're not a member of the team. But I hope this is educational. I hope it helps. We're going to be using AWR 16.0 today. I just upgraded to it. Uh, remember, you can get an educational license for this. Just look up AWR educational license. You type in some of your university information and you'll be able to download the program for free and use it for, I think it's 120 days before you have to reapply for the license. But you can just indefinitely apply for the license for those of you who didn't know. And you basically get all the upgrades and the software is pretty much 98% functional. The only 2% missing is like remote simulations and things like that, but uh, pretty much everything else will work. Everything is open to you. Uh, and so let's get started. So, so we're here in a fresh project, AWR 16. Specifically today, what we're going to be modeling is we're gonna be creating the footprint for this circulator, the RF CR5855. Uh, this is the lower frequency one, so it's larger. I just finished doing this one. And Tarek is like, oh, show me, show me, you know, is there a video, you know? And then Marisol's like, oh yeah, send it to me too, you know? So um, the, the one I just did is actually smaller. So therefore I have to redo everything from scratch, which is fine, that's fine, because we're going to be able to show it here in the video. So I'm gonna move this to my second monitor here. And by the way, Tarek and Marisol, you're going to owe me a coffee because I had to turn off my lo-fi hip-hop, which I had playing in the background just to do this video. So now, uh, yeah. Anyways, so the first thing you're going to do is you're going to go and you're going to hit File, New with Library, AWR Example Libraries, and then you're going to select AWR RF Board 2 Layer. Now, the great thing about this example project is it has global definitions already set up for several substrates including FR4, I'm going to select 4003 specifically because it's the closest to the one that we're using, which is 4003C. I think there's a note here that says 4003C has a process-specific dielectric constant of 3.38, but the Rogers data sheet claims ER 3.55 should be used for circuit design. So basically we're, we're going to leave this almost the same. Specifically, the one we, we have in the lab is 32 mil. We have already a design block here that says 31 mil. So we're just going to use that uh, one mil difference. It's not going to make all that much of a difference. 0 0.7874. The copper thickness for both bottom and top is already set to 0 0.03556. So we're just going to leave that. That's already uh, one ounce copper. And then, yep, so our layers are correct and all that stuff. In this video, we're not doing any kind of uh, EM simulation and stuff like that, so I'm not going to show how to do, how to use the example file uh, for doing EM simulations. That's a little bit more advanced. So what you're going to do is you're going to go down to the bottom left here. You should already know how to navigate AWR. So if I say things like elements, layout, project, I mean these tabs here on the left, if you need some clarification, go check out parts one, two, and three of the original AWR tutorial that's available on this YouTube page. Uh, so we're going to go to layout, and then here we see that we already have a cell library. Now the cool thing about cell libraries is that uh, you can export these, you can import them, and it already has predefined footprints. Uh, specifically, the one that's already here is for vias. So we're not really going to use this, I'm just going to minimize it and then I'm going to right click on it. I'm going to make a new one just as an example. So you can right click new, give it a name, choose which type do you want, DXF or GDS2. I use GDS2. You can select create as a linked file. This will actually save it as a file on the computer. And then every time you save it in AWR, it'll export the update file. So you can go ahead and send it to people. So that's effectively what I'm going to do for you guys is I'm going to send you this GDS2 file and you'll be able to import it into your AWR and use it in your designs. Uh, so you hit that and you hit create and it'll bring up a file dialog. I've already started one, so I'm going to hit cancel. I'm going to go right click, 
link to cell library. Now you might be wondering what the difference between import and link is. Import will make a copy of the file and internalize it to your project file. So it's not actually saved on the computer, it is saved within the project. Linking physically links to the file and then any updates or changes will be propagated to the file and the file will be ready to send um, to your coworkers or whatever. So I'm gonna go here, AWR, Tarix Circulator. I'm gonna select Tarix Circulator's footprint library and hit open. As you can see, we already have the one for the RFCR5863. So now we're gonna right click here, new layout cell. We're gonna call this RFCR5855 and hit create. So now we're here in this empty layout view. And then on the left here in the middle, it says model layer. And there's a frick load of layers here. We're specifically going to be working initially with the ones down here called SMT lead top and SMT package top. So this is for the top layer of the board. You can also do it for the bottom layer of the board, depending on how complex your design is. So effectively we're going to go to the left and click on the little box here and you'll see a little triangle appears there it means that layer has been selected normally the design toolbars appear on the bottom left i've moved them up to the top right so if you don't see it on the top right where my mouse is going it's because it's in the top in the bottom left here you can go ahead and grab them by the dots and move them anywhere on the screen that you would like so i'm going to create a rectangle first just drop it in there, boop, like that. See, it's just an outline. I'm gonna right click, or sorry, I'm gonna select and then right click shape properties, go to the rectangle tab, and that's gonna give me width and height. I'm just copying off the data sheet here. This, uh, the package is 19 by 19. I'm gonna do 19 by 19. Now that's gonna make it pretty large here. I'm just gonna eyeball it. There's no real way to center it perfectly. So I'm literally just kind of eyeballing it because everything is going to be relative to that. So from there, we're basically going to get our work done now. So I'm looking at the data sheet and I'm trying to find, because I like to drop in the uh, those like mounting holes that the circulator has, it seems. And I need to know what the spacing is between the edge of the board and the uh, the edges. So it's 2.3 from the center of the hole to the edge of the board. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create another rectangle off to the side here, and that's gonna be 2.3, or oh wait, sorry. <laughs> it's selected, right click, shape property, go to rectangle again, 2.3, 2.3, hit okay. Now I need to line this up with the corner. So how do you do that? Well, what you're gonna do is you're gonna select the big one first and then shift click the small one. You see they're both selected. I'm going to go to the arrangement and I'm going to select top and then I'm going to select left. That's going to line it up right there on the edges. Now the cool thing about this is, right, I can do an array copy, but that only copies the square, just, it's not going to copy the via. So I'm going to go ahead and make that circle now. And because I already have this here, this is going to be a lot easier. You go to draw on the toolbar up here and you select circle. Hold control, you see you have an anchor point that appears there. Click, drag, right click, shape properties. The data sheet says the diameter of the vias is three. So we're doing a radius of 1.5. Now you can delete this. And then you're gonna select this circle. You're gonna go back to draw, modify shapes, array copy two rows, two columns. The X spacing is going to be 14.5. And the Y spacing, this is very important, is negative 14.5. So we're gonna go 14.5 to the right and then 14.5 down. If you do positive 14.5 on the Y spacing, it'll go up. So we're gonna go center to center spacing style. And that's gonna go ahead and copy the circle. Now that we've done this, we can also uh, do a chamfer of the outside, the data sheet, by the way, if you don't know what I'm talking about, it says it right there. It's a radius of 1.5 for the chamfer. So you're going to select the big square. You're going to go to draw, modify shapes, modify corners. The type of radius is fixed. It's a fillet. 
of radius 1.5 on the outer corners and hit OK. You see it does that. Perfect. Now we have to do the legs. So on the data sheet, if we scroll down here, it says the total length of the leg is 3. The first leg before the first bend is 1.6. So we're, we're basically going to create, um, again, the tab is one wide, one millimeter wide, three long with a 1.6 for the bend. And then if we look at the future for the copper pads that we're going to be doing, it says that the spacing between the body and the contact pad should be one uh, 1.5. So we're just going to do all of these um, just because it's, it's nice to be able to see what it is that you're working with. So we're going to start. Now, we need to, ch let me keep coming back here because I need to show you guys how to do this. It's, it's, it's not hard, but at the same time, it's not easy either. So specifically, it says that from the edge to the middle of the leg, it's 6.2 millimeters. The one down here is easy because you can center it to the body and then edge lock it or edge anchor it. So this one's easy. The one that's going to be a little bit harder is this one, but I'll show you how to do it. Again, we're going to use placeholders for doing that. So again, it says 6.2 off the top edge to the center of the lead. So I'm going to go here, create another rectangle. I'm going to select it, shape, modify, rectangle, height. The height is going to be 6.2, which is the distance that it says. Right, perfect. So now I'm going to bring it up to the edge here and then I'm going to select the body first and then this and then again we're going to top anchor it. So now my lead has to be centered about this point right here. So there's two ways to do this. And I think the one I'm going to do is um, I'm just going to eyeball it. I'm going to create a rectangle here. You see how you can anchor it to a spot? I'm going to go off the edge here. And then I'm going to go I'm going to go as long as I want using this corner anchor here. I'm going to go up, but I'm only going to go up 0.5, which is half the size of the lead. Because if I'm correct, you can select it, do shape properties, and then you can just make this one. And then the width, we said, the longer one is going to be three. And exactly. So you see it went down. And then it went, so I can just go like this. Which is perfect. Now you might be wondering how we're going to copy it over. Well, we're going to do a copy. And then I'm just going to drop it anywhere. I'm going to select this one first, and then I'm going to select this one. And then what am I going to do? I'm going to go ahead and do a horizontal center. Then I'm going to select this one first, and then this one. And I'm going to go here to space evenly across and set the spacing to zero edge to edge. And boom, that lines up perfectly. Then I'm going to copy, paste. You can right click to rotate, rotate it. Select the body first, then select the anchor. And then we're going to do a center spacing. And then we're going to do space evenly down, zero millimeters edge to edge. Boop. So now we have the three full length blocks, right? So now we're just going to go in, you literally just zoom in, grab the rectangle tool, control for anchor. And then you're just going to anchor. And the first length of interest is 1.6. So I'm going to keep going. Like that. And then, like I did before, I can just copy and paste. I can select that. And then I can do middle. And then anchor right. So you see it appears in the right spot there. It's already selected. I can just copy paste, rotate it. Again, select the big one, then select the small one. And we're going to do center. Or sorry, it goes the other way. Center. 
in one direction and then top on the other. So now we have this. So now we have the what is effectively the package already done. However, these are leads. So I'm going to select, I'm going to click select all of these. And I'm going to right click shape properties. I'm going to go to layout and then I'm going to change those to SMT lead top. So now those are the right color. So now we're going to keep getting a little bit more interesting here. I'm going to, I'm, going to, I'm here in the drawing layers. I'm going to go to the left and then I'm going to go to V0102 and check F so that the vias are filled instead of just these empty outlines. Because we're about to do something really cool here. So it says that you need all right, recommended footprint. Uh, obviously the pads are copper clad, but also the base underneath is copper clad. That's for heat dissipation. I'm going to show you guys how to do that. You're going to go ahead and select the body, copy, paste, drop it. This is in the wrong layer. So select it, right click, shape properties, scroll up. We're looking for CU underscore 01. OK. Now that's copper. Line it up. So select the first, select the second. Middle, center. Now it's lined up properly. Now we need to do the vias in the same hole as here. So we're just going to zoom in onto one of them. Draw, circle, sorry, escape to disable the tool. I need to select the via layer. So you go here in the middle and you select the via layer, via 0102. Again, you just click the little square, little black triangle shows up. That means the area is selected. Draw, circle, control for anchor, anchor center, pull down to 1.5. It's already selected. Draw, modify layers. Again, array copy. What's the spacing between them? It's 14.5. So two rows, two columns, 14.5 and negative 14.5. Center to center space style. Hit OK. So now those vias are done. Now we're going to do the heat dissipation vias in the ground. Copper. That's also easy. By the way, you can just save your outline here so you don't lose any progress in case of a crash. We're going to go draw circle. I'm going to do it off to the side here. It says half millimeter diameter. So we're going to go 0 0.25, 0 0.25, and hit OK. Select this, then select this, middle, center. Right. So now we can actually tell how off-center our design is because we have all this. So I'm actually just going to go ahead and select everything. And then I'm going to scroll in and line this up. Just because I'm a little OCD, right? <laughs> See, now it looks a little bit better. So now what you can do is you can select this, right? And it doesn't really say what the spacing is. It kind of just shows the same spacing, but effectively there should be three to the right. So it should be four by four. So I have a calculator here in front of me, and then I'm just literally going to take 19 divided by a total of 7, which means the spacing between them is 2.714. I'm just going to say 2.71 spacing. I'm going to select the middle one, draw, modify shapes, array copy. Off the center one, it's 4x4 four four grid, so we do 4x4. Four four. And then it's just going to be 2.71, 2.71, and then again, center to center. Now, these small vias are too close to that big via. I don't like that, so I'm actually going to reduce the spacing. I'm going to go back, select that circle again, draw. Modify shape, array copy, 4 by 4. I'm going to say 2.5 center to center. It's a little bit better, but I don't know. Because that might crack. So... Again, we're not actually going to mount it to the board. 
it's going to be held down to the board by the soldering however i'm just trying to show how to how to like how to do the footprint so i guess because we're just showing how to do the footprint we'll just ignore that again you select the center one draw modify shapes array copy four by four now we're going to the left so we're going to do negative 2.5 and positive 2.5 center to center okay see the center is already selected so modify shapes array copy four by four center negative 2.5 negative 2.5 and then again draw modify shapes array copy four by four center center 2.5 negative 2.5 and we're just going to select these extra ones here and hit delete. Cool. Now we have most of this done. Uh, in the other design that I did, you see I added these numbers there. You don't necessarily have to do that. Um, I'll go ahead and show you how to do it anyways. If you want to do it, you can go draw text and then just click one and then it'll automatically make it into a polygon depending on the layer that you're on. I'm just going to delete that for this one. Um, and then we're going to go ahead and make those pads now. So. What we're going to do here is we have to account for that 1.5 spacing. So I'm going to grab a rectangle here. I'm going to go back to the copper one layer and then again anchor. And then I'm just going to do 1.5. It actually locks automatically to that distance. So that's 1.5. Then I'm going to do through to the end and then back out of that. And then... Um, I want to find out what 50 ohms is for the lines that are going to be feeding in and out of it. So specifically, this one runs from 2550 to 2650. So that's 100 megahertz of 50. So we're looking at 26 as a center frequency. We need to know that information. That's important. 2.6 gigahertz. Right. So then we're going to go ahead here. We're going to go back to project view. We're going to go to circuit schematic. We're going to create a new schematic. Hit create. Don't worry about the project options. We're going to go in here. We're going to hit element. By the way, when you first install 16.0, right click when you do the add circuit view. Attributes will be showing. So it'll look like this. Just right click and deselect attributes and it'll look similar. So now the searching is a little bit different. It used to be that there was like a search bar down here. And you could just type in what you were looking for. Now you can look by... Uh, component name, you can look by description, you can look by path as well. So we're just going to go here, type in MLIN under name, select microstrip line, hit OK, and hit OK. So now, what we, now with the newer version, starting with 15, what you could do is you could right click and hit synthesize. And based on the microstrip substrate settings, you can then come in here, we're going to set this to 2.6, and then we're going to select with select length, select impedance real, impedance imaginary, and EL for electrical length, and we're going to set this to 50 for the real, 0 for the imaginary, and Tarek said 30 degrees for the electrical length. So we're going to make sure that everything is all punched in, and then we're going to hit the synthesize button. It's going to update these values over here. I'm going to go ahead and trim those. So we're looking for 1.72. That's the number we're looking for. Let me write this down. 1.72 is the width of interest. We're going to go back to the design. And what we're going to do is we're just going to select that. And then we're going to say that the height is 1.72. And I did 2 millimeters for the last one there. So literally what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab... I actually want to center it on where the pad goes. Um, how did I do the other one actually, to be honest with you? Okay, so I lined it up and then I went from there. So I guess that's fine, I guess that works. So we're just gonna select the top one and then select this one and then we're just gonna do center, like that. And then I wanna copy it over, but the thing is I didn't copy the that copper one, so I'm just going to go here, select, and we're going to do 1.5 like that. Because then I can copy this one, paste it over here, right? And then again, we select this one first, and then we select this one. 
and then we space evenly across. We say, not nine, guys, come on. Space evenly across zero, edge to edge, zero. No, select this one first, then select this one, and then do space evenly across zero, edge to edge, like that. And then we're going to center them. Wait, no, you see it, it automatically changes what the center, what the uh, anchor point is. So then I can delete that. Now that's properly done. Then I'm going to copy, paste, rotate. Create another rectangle, anchor, 1, 5, and then we're going to select this one first, then select this one. Space evenly down, 0, 0, edge to edge. Then we're going to click, click. And then center them. And then I can delete this one. Perfect. So now we're going to add the cell ports. You go up here, moving the mouse plenty. Select cell port anchor, control to go out that way, it's bottom to top. Top to bottom to go right. And then to go down, it's right to left. So now that's port one, two, and three for assigning this to the actual circulator component. So I'm gonna hit save. Oh, the project was not saved. So I'm gonna say, uh, let's go to Google Drive here. Let's grab this one. I was just going to say underscore video. So we're going to save. Yes. So this is done, right? So we're going to go ahead and actually save that. And we're going to go back to the schematic view here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to elements. Circ is the circulator closed form. I'm going to drop that in. You see it's a three port device. So what you do is you select it, right click properties. You got a layout. Library, select target circular footprint library, or whatever you called yours. And then this one is the 855. We're going to select that. Right, so now this one is assigned the big one. So we're going to go ahead and, and you see you can actually connect these lines here, which is nice. I can literally just assign these here, right, if I wanted to, to simulate or whatever. But then if I go into layout view and I hit control A, snap. Everything snaps perfectly. Now you might be wondering what these extra squares are. These are negative space, don't worry about those. If you wanna not see those, what you do is you go back to layout view and you go into the, like, the uh, layers list and then you look for all the ones that are negative and positive duplicates and you deselect them. And that'll get rid of the negative space for your design. So now you can see you, you can assign a, a, a footprint and actually go in here and add components and stuff like that. And you can actually move this around, right? Now the cool thing is you can copy and paste the circulator. And let's say this is the smaller one. You can select the other footprint. And then when I go in here and say select in layout, you see you have the two different ones. So they're both being simulated using the circulator component. However, in the layouts, they're different. So you can update the layouts separately so there's different layouts. Also, if you have a three port S parameter file, what you're able to do is if you go to elements, sub-circuits, your three-port um, your three-port S parameters will appear here. You can drop them into the... Sorry. <laughs> you can uh, effectively do the same thing, right? So you know how you drop them as a block. You can then right-click on that block and do the same thing, basically properties, and you go to layout, and you can assign the same layout to an S parameter file. So it doesn't even have to be an actual component from AWR, it can be an S parameter file, as long as the number of ports matches, as you can see your number of nodes, right? So the number of nodes for that component is three. So it will only show you footprints that are three port. So again, this is very powerful and I hope this basically explained it. it. Took me like 30 minutes to do it, you know, it's fine, whatever. Again, we did linked file. So you're gonna layout you down here. This is linked. You can still go right click save, but this is a, f I can send you guys this file and you can use this. You can import it without having to do the work again. You just have to ask me for it. If we have this on a server, like on the R drive or something like that, we can all update it and use it at the same time. So that's another cool feature about these uh, libraries in AWR. So anyways, thank you for watching. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. If it's Tarek or Marisol, feel free to text me on WhatsApp. You already have my number. And I hope this was helpful. Thank you.